and we've reached a bipartisan budget agreement that we're ready to move to the full Congress. And I think it's a really important step forward, excuse me. <clears throat> and it takes uh, the threat of catastrophic default off the table, protects our hard-earned and historic economic recovery. And the agreement also represents a compromise, which means no one got everything they want. But that's the responsibility of governing. And the, this is a deal is good news, for, I believe, you'll see, for the American people. The agreement prevents the worst possible crisis, a default for the first time in our nation's history. An economic recession, retirement accounts devastated, millions of jobs lost. It also protects key priorities and accomplishments and values that congressional Democrats and I have fought long for, long and hard for. Investing in America's agenda that's creating good jobs and communities throughout the country. It protects Social Security, Medicare, and veterans, and so much more. The Speaker and I made it clear from the start that the only way forward was a bipartisan agreement. That agreement now goes to the United States House and to the Senate. I strongly urge both, both chambers to pass that agreement. Let's keep moving forward on meeting our obligations and building the strongest economy in the history of the world. I'll take a few questions. President, you said at the beginning that the debt ceiling was not negotiable. Isn't that what you've just done here? And isn't that what you guys work? look? We're not negotiating the debt ceiling. Here's the deal: they passed. They said they're going to. They passed the debt ceiling, and they said they'd only do it on condition that it have all these cuts in it. I said I'm not going to do that. You pass the debt ceiling. Period. I'll negotiate with you on the cuts. What you say. What's going to happen? What, what, what the budget's going to look like? That's what we are negotiating in order to get to them deciding that they're going to go along with a new debt ceiling, meaning that it's not attached. It's something totally different attached than was attached before. So if you want to try to make it look like I made some compromise in the debt ceiling, I didn't. I made a compromise on the budget. That's what they wanted, is you make a compromise on the budget, and that's what you've done, even though you haven't gone as far as they wanted. Isn't that right? Sure, yeah. Well, <laughs> Can you think of an alternative? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, what do you say to members of your own party who say you've made too many concessions in this deal? They'll find I didn't. Mr. President, on your, on your allies and adversaries to America, would you be willing to say about what you think this process said to those adversaries and, and allies? You have a deal now, but what does the process say? What does the struggle say? Well, it says them? we've been through this more than once, and it's just the nature of the way we handle the deficit and handle whether we're going to, each year, going to uh, pay our debts. And uh, it's happened more than once. It will probably happen again, but it's not going to happen at least for another two years here. And I don't think beyond, I think beyond that it won't either. Oh, wow, friends. So this is happening. Officials have confirmed that President Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy have a debt ceiling deal. The agreement includes many different provisions and adjustments to relief programs, tax credits, and more. So in this video, I'll be sharing with you exactly how this new bill may affect you. My dearest friends, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video. Also, tomorrow on Memorial Day, I'll be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway of $75. If you would like to enter the giveaway, all you have to do, friends, is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, dear friends, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. According to Yahoo News, President Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy have a tentative agreement that will raise the debt ceiling and end their standoff just days before a possible U.S. default. The deal, once enacted, will boost a nation's borrowing limit for two years and take the full faith and credit of the U.S. off the negotiating table through the next presidential election. So that gives politicians and markets an extended breather on an issue that regularly leads to economic chaos. McCarthy and Biden will now face the task of getting it passed into law before June 5, 2023, when Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says the U.S. government may run out of money to pay all of its bills. Lawmakers on both the left and the right 
immediately raised concerns about some of the compromises. The details of the deal are still emerging. What is already clear is that it proposes an array of changes to how our government operates. There will be new limits on government spending, new requirements around accessing government assistance, and some cuts in red tape associated with energy projects. At the center of this deal is an agreement on government spending. This issue nearly derailed the talks. The two sides were at odds over a GOP demand to roll back increases in discretionary government spending that were approved by Congress last year, just before Republicans took control of the House of Representatives. In the end, President Biden and Speaker McCarthy agreed to keep overall non-defense spending largely at current levels into next year. Then in 2025, there will be a small 1% increase in spending. The two sides were able to make the math work thanks to appropriation adjustments that will lead to cuts in some key areas, but not as much as Republicans had initially demanded. Another big issue that remained unresolved until the very last hour was what work requirements would be required in return for access to government assistance, such as food stamps and the temporary assistance for needy families program. So this deal will make changes to what some Americans need to access those two programs. They are changes that Kevin McCarthy said would lift Americans out of poverty and into the workforce. According to White House aides, Speaker McCarthy told his caucus behind closed doors that the final requirements are a little stronger than even what Republicans had passed in their debt ceiling proposal in March. There were additional compromises as well as some issues that ended on the cutting room floor. Permitting reform is addressed, apparently in a limited way. Industry groups and lawmakers have long complained about the mountains of government red tape that often stand in the way of energy projects. The aim is to streamline the government's review process for energy projects in the years ahead, but the full provisions have not yet been formally released. Senators Joe Manchin and John Barrasso are also aiming to produce a more comprehensive bipartisan deal on the permitting reform issue this coming summer. Another issue that appears not to be addressed in a significant way is green energy tax credits. Republicans wanted to repeal the credits that were part of Biden's Inflation Reduction Act last year, claiming they were market distorting. The deal also does not appear to include White House ideas for raising additional revenue through closing tax loopholes that could have impacted tax bills in industries like energy. Another issue left on the cutting room floor are student loans. Republicans had initially aimed to use the debt ceiling debt to cancel President Biden's effort to forgive student loan, but the GOP ended up backing down knowing that there is ongoing litigation that could lead the Supreme Court to cancel the effort in the months ahead anyways. Speaker McCarthy has signaled early in the negotiations he would be willing to let that be an issue decided in the courts. Thank you so much, friends, for being here and for being part of this community. I will be announcing several winners tomorrow on Memorial Day for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you'd like to enter the weekly giveaways, friends, all you have to do is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you watch and then comment on, the greater your chances, friends, of winning the giveaways. Thank you and have a wonderful and very blessed Memorial Day weekend.